Honestly, I'm not sure I've seen a bigger disconnect between what's happening in the press conferences versus what's on the front page of the Herald Sun. Today's press conference is largely unedited for prosperity's sake. Questions. Ah, oh, here we go again. Matthew Martin is all throat, so both you, Simon Clifton and Greg Mirabella, expressing their concerns <coughs> about the May piece before the November 10 deadline. Why was the response sent? Oh, I can't remember receiving that, I'm afraid. So you received nine letters, including from members of the Administrative Committee, and you don't remember receiving any correspondence? Well, I'm sorry, I don't remember any of that, and frankly, that matter's been dealt with. It's been dealt with properly and efficiently uh, by the State Directors issued another statement this morning, appropriately so. I've made it clear that we're a mainstream political party and will act as such. So she was pre-selected in July 31. Concerns were raised then. Concerns were raised prior to her pre-selection. Multiple stories have been written since her pre-selection. You received nine letters from Liberal Party members, including admin committee members, and you don't think, oh, well, maybe there is a problem and I should look into this? That's an opinion of yours, Samaya, not mine. It's a question, though. Well, it's, it's one I think you've answered yourself. So you, <laughs> so you didn't consider actually looking further into her links to the city of No, because that's not my job. Tonight. No. What, 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 you, what we have in place in our party are sensible and proper processes. And as the State Director said this morning, that's the role of our State, Secret of our State Secretary to do when they did everything available to their information at the time. No. <laughs> no, that's okay, as long as we're okay. Sorry. Look, I'll just be very, very clear. We have a, a process in our party around candidate selection, okay? Um, I don't interview every single candidate. You wouldn't expect me to because there's over 130 of them, 120 of them. And the most important part is we have a candidate selection process. And I don't make arbitrary decisions on people based on any email or any media comment. What we do is have a proper process. You'd expect us to do so because that's fair. Hang on. Because that's fair. And uh, in the processes we went through, the information, any information that was gleaned was considered. Information that subsequently comes to light has to then be considered, which is what the State Director has done. So the letters were considered? Uh, I, as I've said, I, I wasn't on the candidate selection process, but I trust implicitly my party to do that work for the information they have at the time. But you said that you hadn't sought out her views, though. Why not? You still haven't been able to answer that question. She's, a, she's your candidate for a safe upper house spot. She's won pre-selection in July. All of these concerns have been raised. We put it to your press conferences yeah. multiple times, yeah. and at no yeah. point you thought you should seek out her views. Samaya, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's right for me to be asking people personal points of view which you couldn't ask in the private sector. I couldn't ask you that on any interview, and it would be unfair to do so. Uh, that's a reasonable and fair thing to expect, is the same test that applies to you that applies to me or anyone else. Matthew, and this, so, if this is in the private sector, and what, is, what does this ultimately mean for the people of Gippsland? It means they have no Liberal candidate. And the per if they do vote for a Liberal candidate, they're not going to get one. No, that's not true at all, Mark. There's a they're ticket. Not be a, there's a ticket. The good party room, though. No, so there's a it? ticket. There is a ticket, and that is exactly what it is. And I say it again, our processes, uh, as the State Director outlined this morning, our processes are fair and reasonable. They are uh, ask any matters that are uh, uh, respectful and can be asked within the framework of the law. In fact, they're quite stringent uh, on many other issues and any issues they, uh, they take up, they will be explored. Now, any information that subsequently comes to light, well, we have to manage that and we have to deal with that. And we've done that fairly, directly and strongly yesterday. And it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. None of that information shows her ongoing and recent engagement with Pastor Jonathan David and his organisation. Yes. Our journalist actually contacted Renee Heat on November 7 and explicitly asked her that they wanted to interview her over her connections to Jonathan David. Did she come to the party and say that she had received this media report? I, I would have no knowledge of that. This was presume, presumably, though, you'd think that a candidate who received the media mm -hmm. inquiry as such would come to the party tell the party that she had received this media inquiry. Why at no point then did, no, did anyone from the party actually not ask her about her connection? Well, it's just not day. feasible for me as an individual to know the knowledge of every media contact to every Liberal candidate around the state, and that is not a, that's not something I'm aware of. You just said you didn't want the state to have faith in one man, you wanted it to have faith in the parliament. That's right.
So do not see the endorsement of Renee Heath or even Mr Dragon as a problem for Victorians right now. No, we have a Liberal team and we're forming a government as a Liberal team. And most importantly, I lead that team and I've made it very clear about where we stand on mainstream political issues and where we want the party and the state to be and the confidence we want people to have in our team, which is committed to fixing Victoria's healthcare system, which is committed to getting down the cost of living, which is committed to making government more accessible like today. They are sensible and mainstream political values and ambition, which is what we want to achieve for this state. Very straightforward. Did the party consider disendorsing Renee Heath prior to the 10th of November when the deadline was up to put her name on the ballot? Well, that matter was never raised with me. So no, well, did, did to you Sam about his candidate for a safe upper house? Sam doesn't do that. That's not the process of one person in the party, Simon. There is a long process to do that in, in a political party that values a democracy. And, um, you know, we have, uh, we have processes to do that. It's What's not up to... Well, I'm not going to go through chapter and verse, the whole constitutional arrangement. Did that process fail? No, the process went through the checks and balances it had presented to it. And that's very important. And as Sam says today, the material that they had presented to them is how they have to judge someone. You can't judge things on things they don't know. That's not fair and reasonable. Sorry, Our no journalist, lie. though, just did a public search on Facebook and found out about Renee Heath Renee Heath's connection to Pastor Jonathan Gabriel. Well, Why was your party unable to do so? Well, you can ask the party state director that. I have, I'm afraid I don't know which journalist you're referring to and I don't know which Facebook site you're referring to and, you know, I'm afraid I don't search fa Facebook looking for other people. So well, Renee Light, are you saying you Renee Light? No, I'm not party. saying anything. I'm saying, I'm saying that the state director issued a statement and the state director is in charge of that process and I've absolute full confidence in his, his so manager. Absolutely, that's absolutely not. Um, she, may, she hasn't made any comments during her candidacy in relation to gay rights, whether she is anti-abortion. In 2020, Moya Zeni has said Victoria State School's program is created by pedophilia apologists to criticise initiatives aimed at celebrating gay and trans students, said she was very disappointed in changes to the law in Victoria um, that banned gay conversion therapy. She says transgender issues were her number one priority. In the middle of this year, you dismissed all of that and said she certainly hasn't made those comments as a candidate. Renee Heath hasn't either. Why does she have to stand down? I think the State Director has issued a very clear statement as to why this morning, and that's the statement that stands. So gay conversion therapy is banned in Victoria. On that, pre on that pretext, do you think more is aiming all that as a stand aside? No, and I think I've answered in relation to that matter multiple times, and I don't see any point in revisiting the same thing I've answered. Because I think if you look at the statement that's been issued this morning, Richard, it's very, very clear why. Tim Smith has come out. In 2018, the Liberal Party disendorsed Marilyn Klein after early voting began, sorry, after the deadline had passed over her pretty Islamophobic comments. Why was she, why was the Liberal Party able to disendorse her, but not able to disendorse her? Uh, I'm not going to go back to the 2018 election, frankly. So it's I'm not going back to the 2018 election. It's well, about the if you let me finish, I'm not going to go back to the 2018 election. I'm dealing with matters at this election. I could go back to matters to the 2010, 2006, 2002 election, but I have no intention of doing so. We have a statement that's been issued by the State Director that is clear and unequivocal, and however you wish to interpret that, that is up to you. But when you made that announcement yesterday, did Sam Roth know what you were going to say? Uh, I have no idea. I didn't pre-brief candidates. This wouldn't be uh, something I would normally do. When you made that announcement yesterday, did Brian Hutton know what you were going to say? Uh, again, I refer to the answer I've just given. Was it? Do you think it was part of your duty or part of your team's duty to brief those people before they stood behind you and you disendorsed the candidate? Uh, well, it's not disendorsing, number one. And number two, uh, my understanding is that all pre-briefing contains every bit of material. And in fact, that, well, that would have been the case. Oh, well, why I'm, was she disendorsed then? Why, why, why? I'm not going to go over all of that. You can make that analysis yourself. Well, I can't make the analysis. You disendorsed a candidate over Islamophobic comments in 2018, but you won't disendorse Renee Heath this time around. Why not? I, I've made a very clear statement as to what the course of action will be. I stand by it. It's as simple as that. Yeah, but there seems to be a bit of an inconsistency in the standards that you apply to different candidates, though. Well, I'll let you be the analysis of that. 
Matthew Tim, Tim, why, Tim. Why have you been unable to just endorse Bernard Hayes? I'm not going to keep going over this over and over again. You haven't I, well, answered the question. Well, I have. Well, I haven't answered it as to how you might want me to answer it, but I'm answering it as to how I believe is the right thing to do, and we have done that. Matthew Simpson's come out this morning saying that you've got no power to do what you've proposed, what you've proposed doing, Renee. He's calling you Andrew Thorburn on steroids, saying it's cultural Marxism. And you quote, whilst I'm a member of the party, I'll call this crap out. What's your response to Simpson? I don't have one, sorry. Timothy Dragon, a few days ago, so not 2020, not a couple of years ago, a few days ago, outside of Creekfold said, there's no such thing as British and Australians. We won this flag fair and square. It's like telling Britain to give the land back to the Vikings and the Vikings to give it back to the Romans. It's absolute bollocks. What do you make of those statements? Well, he's apologised for them and it's as simple as that, so he should. Do you think it's... Do you think he should stand as a Liberal candidate for Mary Warren North? The Liberal Party I lead has very clear plans in relation to uh, what we will do should we come to government, both with treaty, both with uh, GLBTIQ rights, and we stand by those, and my team will too. He Even says about abortion reform? No. He says about abortion, though, lies the passage through the vagina, the reason why you can or can't murder a human. Do you think that's disrespectful to women? I, I don't think it is all... Uh, sensible comments and he's apologised for them and so he should. Do you think apologising though is enough? Yes, I think if he apologises, with, with, uh, genuinely apologises, which he has, I think you'd expect that. You'd ask for an apology first, he has given that, and that's a sensible thing to do. Actually, that's clearly his view. Well Mark, lots of people have different points of view. Mm -hmm. Lots of people have different points of view. And as I've said constantly, if people express a different point of view respectfully and sensibly, then that's up to them to do so. Was it if, if, if it's disrespectful, I'd ask for an apology. Mm -hmm. It was disrespectful. I've asked for an apology and we got it. You've announced previously that you'll be legislating the 2030 emissions reduction targets. He says he'll vote against that and he'll cross the floor. Well, uh, that's a matter for Tim. Should he be elected? Should I be elected? And should all of us come to government? But I... But I but I expect that that legislation will be put to the parliament uh, and I expect a sensible and rational debate around it. He also says he lives in the seat of Berwick. He says that he put, Brad, he put Brad Batten third on his list. Under the Liberal Party's constitution, as I'm sure you're aware, that is against the rules. Well, he has said, first point, that I'm not sure that's actually correct, but he has said that uh, he's apologised for any silly comments he's made and I accept it. Oh, so he hasn't put Brad Batten well, you can ask him some. I think this is getting well, a little tried, well, getting a little tiresome. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, it's against the party constitution, though. Does he not need to be just endorsed at least? In no, to no, he does not. Do you have a problem with your keeping your candidates and MPs in line? No. Really? Uh, what we are focused on is changing the government and giving Victoria sensible and reasonable government. That's why I'm standing here again today, making a sensible and reasonable announcement to bring government to Victorians. It's why I'm focused more than ever on fixing the healthcare crisis. We can talk about candidates all you like, but that's not gonna save Victorians who are dying waiting for an ambulance. You know, we can, I can ask about someone said someone to something on a polling booth, but that ain't gonna get more hospital beds in our state. The way to fix these things is to change the government. I'm going to lead that government. You know where I stand on these matters. And that is going to be the attitude that takes to government, that changes these problems for our state. That fixes... Well, no, that's <laughs> that is correct, Simon. But well, are you, you know, having a hard time doing that. No, that is that is <coughs> politics. That is politics. You know, Labor's had similar issues themselves. Them, candidate in the upper house, which of their own, which has mysteriously disappeared. Look, you know, that's politics. We will manage whatever we need for the best interests of the people of Victoria. I want to fix the health system. I'm going to, and I won't be distracted from getting on with that main game. So you'd be happy having Timothy Dragon on your team. Dennis, he's apologised for silly comments. He's not alone in this world for making silly comments. And he's apologised for the ones he made. And yes, uh, to go back to Mark's point, some of those were disrespectful. Oh, I know they were disrespectful. I, I saw what was printed. He apologised for those, as he should. But the first thing you'd ask of someone who makes uh, any disrespectful comment is for an apology. And uh, he gave that. And I think that's fair and reasonable. Was it respect of preference, Catherine Cunning, above Labor? Well, she's only in the parliament because the Labor Party preferenced her at the last election and the Labor Party didn't abolish group voting tickets and got her elected, right? So uh, let's that be clear first. Second point, I've noticed when those comments were made yesterday, which I find deeply offensive, 
and I think any sensible Victorian would, oh, I issued a statement condemning them immediately, as they should be, as they should be. I noticed the Deputy Premier sought to try and use those comments of mine condemning them politically, which I find quite offensive and I think she should apologise for those. Are you, are you worried about some of the, you know, using Captain Cummings as an example, but also some of the language and some of the tactics we're hearing about on free poll, are you worried about the sort of tone of what's going on? Here? Well, I've seen some of it myself, Richard, um, you know, and been subjected to some of it myself. And um, you know this kind of narrative coming out of the Labor Party that it's only from one side of policy politics is, is I know you didn't and I know you didn't I know you didn't, but this language coming out of Labor that this is from one side of politics is is just uh, untrue. But you know this is politics and we work forward sensibly and respectfully and I don't behave in manners. You know if I do something wrong I'd apologise for it. If other people do they should. The Premier should too. Uh, you know this is. Being con common sense and sensible, we're trying to be sensible. You'd expect me to do so, and you'd expect me to expect that those around me, and we do. I guess I'll ask the question again, and I'm just saying, are you worried about the sort of the tenor of debate and some of the tactics from all sides of politics on free polling booths and some of the language that's out there? Well, you know, I mean, again, I refer to the Deputy Premier's I'm comments. Asking you, I'm asking you about what the tenor of debate, I'm not saying right, yeah. left, whatever. Are you just concerned that yeah, something um, violent may happen? Well, uh, I hope not. I obviously am concerned, would, would hope not. I don't want any of that to happen to anyone in public life, to anyone full stop. And, and, and I, that's why I condemn outright uh, those comments made by Dr Cumming yesterday. They were excep exceptionally silly and, and they should be condemned. I, I am further annoyed that the Labor government, particularly someone as senior as the Deputy Premier, would try and weaponise those comments of mine, condemning them, to weaponise those politically, which, you know, should not be the case at all, and uh, you know I think she should have a please explain. Well, you you Daily issued a statement today saying Labor's preference for legalised cannabis party first, not registry upper house regions. Could that be described as Labor preference in the left wing radical internet? Comment? Well, 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 close to the heart of Victoria, Australia's Jewish community. The Labor Party is directly preferencing the Greens. The Greens have a history of pre-selecting candidates and supporting candidates who have made media anti-Semitic remarks. Labor is directly preferencing, or preferencing in a number of seats, the Victorian Socialists, who directly support the anti-Semitic BDS movement. You know, I will not take lectures from the Labor Party on preferences when they are preferencing the Victorian Socialists who actively support the anti-Semitic BDS movement. Let me ask the member for Caulfield to make some comments on that front. Yeah, look, um, I'm horrified, quite frankly, as, as the Premier is starting to um, really scrape the bottom of the barrel in a desperate attempt to call, uh, call people Nazis and anti-Semites. Um, I'll be the first to stand up if the Premier wants to come forward and actually pinpoint who these are. But to be able to go out there and, and loosely use the word Nazis is quite offensive, I must say. Um, we fought in a bipartisan way to ban the Nazi swastika, as we should, uh, something that I think we can all be very proud of in our Victorian Parliament. Um, you can't just call somebody a Nazi. Uh, it, is, um, it is a kind of language that you use that um, brings a lot of... Um, it, it, it's, it's making me um, <laughs> quite stressed about just thinking about it. You know, when I think about my my wife and, and many of her family that you know, had to survive the atrocities of the Holocaust and have come back and what they did for them. You can't use that language. The Premier should know better. Um, fine, you know, all's fair in loving war, but this is scraping the bottom of the barrel. Dan, were you on the deselection vetting panel for Renee Um I was part of, of, um, of some of that process, yes. No red flags raised there? Uh, look, again, you know, I think it's, it's quite clear in terms of you know what we were, what the um, what the state director has put out in terms of his statement, and um, and that's certainly I stand by that statement. Do you, do you have a concern that people aren't able to, um, I guess, have a religious view and sit in the parliament in a Liberal Party? Uh, look, I have no problems with uh, uh, the people's own views, um, and their their views are their views, but um, but certainly those that um, seek to uh, discriminate against um, from a whole range of things, which I've been very whether it's LGBTI issues, um, whether, whether on, um, on 
First Nations or, or others, um, I have a very strong view on that. And I'm very proud in terms of standing up against all kinds of hate, as I would. And I think there should be separation between church and state. Matthew Last one, guys. Matthew Guy, oh sorry, one from you, David, if that's okay. Sure. Matthew Guy said he was, you know, has obviously been busy, leader of the opposition, going around the state, can't vet every single candidate. Do you know in this election process, can we that vetted Renee Key? Like presumably you also saw these stories about Renee Key between pre-selection and now. Why did you not think No, 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 no. We're all very busy. Um, certainly we can only be presented with information that we were presented with. And, um, and which we did, and we can only take things on face value, which we have. Do you not so, have personal responsibility, though? Responsibility oh, absolutely, to the party. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely do, and I take that with the highest of, of, of regard and, and, and do everything to the best that we possibly can. That's what we do. Um, we can't check, um, you know, we can only take people on face value, which we have, and the information that we're given, which we do, and on that basis, that's the way we've acted. If, okay. somebody, if, if, if other information appears later, then I'm sorry, but I think that's fair that nobody nobody would be able to um, take that information once things change, information changes. Matthew Guy earlier said that if it was in the private sector, one to him, um, that he wouldn't be able to ask private questions about per people's personal views or their religion. The Equal Opportunity Act actually says that an employer may discriminate on the basis of a political belief or activity in the offering of employment to another person as a ministerial advisor, a member of staff of a political party, member of the electorate staff of any of it, or any other similar employment. Do you not think you had a responsibility given under the Equal, Equal Opportunity Act? You are able to ask these questions to further drill into her views. If you think I'm going to discriminate against people on their basis of their views on abortion or on other social matters, I would never make a judgment on anyone so long as they express their point of view sensibly and respectfully. And I have absolutely no intention of discriminating uh, for any Victorian on the basis of their private views, so long as they're done sensibly and respectfully, and that is what a respectful leader would do. Matthew, did you authorise um, the party writing a legal letter to the V's in regards to the dry, uh, sorry, the capital investigation? If the party has written it, it will come from the party. Did you authorise that, though? Well, no, if, a party, if the party has written it, it will come from the state director and the party as you'd expect it would. They manage the party, they manage the party's operations. So he's employed surely to do, and he does a very good job of it. Surely you have a view on, you had a view on whether that letter should have been sent. Any matters or correspondence from my party in relation to that matter have my absolute support. So you can take it that the state director and I are on an absolute unity ticket on anything to do with that. Have you got any spoken to Ms Chapman? Please. No. Over the past few months, you've led uh, you know, quite a united team. Um, you've introduced lots of policies, the two dollar PT fare, mm -hmm. your net zero emissions reduction mm -hmm. targets. Are you disappointed that all of these external things around your candidates, around the um, around the party itself, has overshadowed your ability to sell an alternative vision for Victoria? No, I think Victorians are focused, Samaya. I think Victorians are focused, and we see this at every pre-poll. We've seen it now for a week. They are focused on getting a government that represents their interests, not a government that looks after its own interests. We see this. David sees this. Deb sees this. I do. At our pre-polls. Victorians are asking very clearly mm. about health and cost of living. They're not asking me about uh, other matters. They are really focused. And, you know, I, I appreciate uh, with great respect, everyone's got a job to do in this room and mine and everything. I understand that totally. Um, but I can only give the feedback I get from polling booths and that is Victorians focused. And that's why there's been so many come out and vote so early because they're focused on changing the government, getting a government that is actually responsive to them and not a government that is just focused on themselves or playing division or a Premier making desperate comments. I mean, desperate Daniel Andrews will say desperate things to get himself re-elected. I'm going to say sensible things to try and give Victorians the kind of government that suits them and works for them, not works for a desperate Premier trying to save his job. Mm -hmm. And I think I've got to go to Brighton. <laughs> so, um, How are you feeling ahead of the people? <laughs> you, you'd ask me something like that. Well, and being there on the stage with Daniel Andrews, it's the only time we'll see the two of you face off together. Listen, the tell you what, if I see Samaya at the back snuck in to ask me questions, I'll be more nervous for the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs>